Capaldi Pool, the makers of Grape Nut Flakes, America's most famous cereal in flake form, present America's most famous cowboy, Buck Jones. Today we bring you the second episode of Hoofbeat, the exciting drama of the Western Plains, and I'm mighty sure that you'll enjoy it a lot. You'll enjoy Grape Nut Flakes, too, a lot, folks, or I miss my guess. Why, you don't know what real chow is till you've had a big bowl of crunchy golden brown grape nut flakes with milk or cream over them. You all know grape nuts, don't you? Well, grape nut flakes have all that good old grape nut flavor plus the crispness that comes of being in flake form. And what's more, grape nut flakes are real good, wholesome chucks. Outdoor men like cowboys and such like grape nut flakes because it's the best bang-up cereal they ever tasted. And believe me, when the cook hits that angle iron for chow, everybody comes a-running when there's grape nut flakes. And they're good for you, too. There's lots of nourishment in them to help build strong, healthy bodies. Why, a dish of grape nut flakes with milk or cream and fruit has as many different kinds of nourishment in it as many a hearty meal. Grape nut flakes are good for breakfast, lunch, or supper. Say, why don't you try some, too, and see if the old Wrangler isn't right? Bulldog that appetite of yours the way Buck Jones and his pals do with great Jones and his pals do with great Jones and his pals do with great nut flakes. And save the top to the boxes, too, girls and boys. They mean free prizes for you. After the program, Buck Jones wants to talk to you about his club. He wants you to be a member. And you want to be a member, too, so be sure to listen... Traveling through the wild hideout country of Colorado, Buck falls in with the Dagger Hills outfit, a surly, hard-bitten crew who are driving a herd of exhausted cattle to some questionable market north. Buck reveals to Red River, the one friendly member of the crew, that he is on the trail of three men, one left-handed with crooked eyes, one with a mark like a Dagger Hills on his shoulder, and a third man whom he doesn't describe. For Red River, knowing their trail boss, Gore, is the man with the dagger hilt mark, breaks in with a startled cry. The next day, Buck, riding his horse, Silver, pulls up near Red River, who is gazing intently toward the front of the herd. Whoa, Silver. Whoa, steady boy. Sure is hot, Red River. Yeah, too hot. We're in for a storm, Buck. I reckon you're right. So the sky don't show it. Not a cloud in sight. Now, there's a sure sign. Just watch that old mothy horn steer leading the herd up there. I've been watching him. Usually he keeps them long horns of his pointed due north. He's been buckling all morning in and out on the frost. Trust a longhorn to smell a storm. And to break his fool neck running from it. You'll make a mess if they stampede it in these washes here. Uh-huh. Well, they're pretty tired. Might be old Morty Horn will think twice before starting to run. A longhorn don't think when he's scared, Buck. But I wish a stampede was all I had to worry about. Meaning about everything not being right with this outfit? Yeah, and what you told me, Buck. Oh, I talked too much. Reckon I was lonesome. Uh, it wasn't that. You had an object. What makes you think so? You know, men don't tell things like that just to hear them tell talk. Not your sort, Buck. And it's easy to guess why you joined up with us. Why, Red River? Well, seeing that the same mark that's on one of the men you're looking for. I've been wondering. You told me, besides this man, you're trailing two more. The left-handed hombre and the third. But you didn't describe him. I can't describe him. Yet you got the earmarks for the other two. That's something I can't lift the mask from. I don't dare think how I got these three bullets here. I'll never quit remembering what they're for. The third man. I don't know what he's like. Hey! Here comes Gore. Uh, whoa, whoa there. Here, you men. Go on, get back to the wagon. Grab a bite to eat as we go along. We ain't stopping at noon. Go to storm. There's a box canyon ten miles off. Are you crazy, Gore? No. Get a snack under your belt. You too, Buck. Then maybe you'll do more work and less talk. I'll regulate my own talking, Gore. You know, it beats all. How two hombres who never met you yesterday can find so much to say to each other. All right, get up there. Hey, hey. Yeah, 
we'll never get anywhere at this rate. Come on, throw them up there. Yes. Hey, put down that gun. Are you looking oh, right? You, boy. Why, you're giving me a scare. I thought... What in tarnation do you mean throwing a gun on me? What in do you mean throwing a gun on me like that? Well, what do you mean coming up behind me sudden like telling me to put them up? I didn't say put them up. I said throw them up. The cattle. Better watch your step if your hearing's as bad as that. My hearing's too good. I keep hearing riders on the trail behind. Imagination. Put your mind on your work and forget it. Boss, I got a feeling troubles in the wind. Yeah. I've felt it ever since you took on that new hand. I didn't take him on. Red River did. When it comes to that, we're none too sure of Red River, boss. Ah, Red River's squeamish. But he's in too deep to be dangerous. Yeah? But suppose this buck hombre turned out to be somebody looking for us. Well, I got my eye on Buck, and I'm just watching for one... Hey, who's that yelling? Jose, over there. He's trying to flag you, go See him? Pointing back. Back there! He's lying! He's dumb! That's right, Gore. And look, the cook wagon's hauling up. Oh, I had a hunch that something ah, was going to... Now, don't me. try and kill your hurt. Come on, we'll see what's wrong. Get up there, sir. Yeah, the rumpus seems to be around the wagon, all right. Hey, what the blaze is that the jump got backed up against the wheel? Looks like a kid from here. Yeah, it is. A dirty, barefoot scrub, not more than ten. Not enough clothes on him to water shotgun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey Jop. Huh? What's that you got cornered there? Well, I ain't just sure, but I'd say it was a cross between the scarecrow and a fighting man. What's he doing here? Well, he says that, uh, well, I'll let him tell you. Uh, tell the boss what you just told me. You got old Sue. Sue? What in the name of Tarn You got you... my cow. You fell in with your herd when you passed in our place this morning. We got his cow. It's mighty strange. Oh, you know what, ain't? Sue's my daughter, but can't she get? Yeah, so he wants her back. <laughs> oh, he wants we to stop and comb our herd. Build a shoot or something, and run him through till he spots you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he don't want much. Say, you reckon you know a kid among these thousands? No, Sue's? Why, gee, I know her hiding at Tannery. Yeah, he just described her to me. A red-haired heifer with a white face. Mighty outstanding, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> you bet she is. He knows things. Why, she broke the ride. Oh, that's something. We can just start forking them, and when we come to one which don't pitch us off, we'll know it soon. <laughs> Here comes Red River, boss. That, that new hand. Yeah, come on. Now, come on. Cut out this nonsense. And get back to work. All of it. Come on. What's this, Gore? Ah, uh, the kid says we got his cow, Red River. But you know we can't fool around here any longer. Come on. Get the herd rolling. No, you can't go. Not till I get my cow. You get out of here, you'll get something you're not looking for. I won't get out. What? You can't steal my cow, you rustler. Why, well, you, you brat. You wait till I get down. Here, give me that black snake, Doc. Now, stand back. None of that, Gore. You keep out of this, Buck. Yeah? Take your saddle. Like this. I do. I... Let go of that lash, will you? I'll teach this pup to call me names. You won't touch him. This is none of your put in. Maybe not, but I'm putting in. And this is where we're going to... Stop Remember, we can't have trouble here. I took all that I aimed to take from this short horn you foisted on us. And here's where I... And the whole game? Huh? Come on, get hold of yourself. There'll be other times and other places. Uh, Listen to the right, Red River. It is for you, Buck. I'm keeping this hot. I leave you two to get rid of this wealth. And the rest of you, go on, get back to work. Come on. Hey, Buck. You're all right. You're sure a good scout. Thanks, bud. But I gotta get through. What makes you so sure she's in our herd? I trailed her to the road this morning. And ain't among your tracks. She's got to be in your herd. Well, she'll have to stay then. You mean that, Red River? Yeah. We don't even know if she's in this herd. And if she is, we can't stop. Listen, boy. You go back and tell your folks if they can prove she's here, uh, we'll pay for her. Now, drip. Listen. I don't like this, Red River. I told you I was a wolf. And get this, Buck. I like you a lot. Any place else, I'd stand with you against the world. But if you interfere with this drive, well... Well? Then I'm one of the pack. And we're seven to one. Figure that out. We'll 
Dagger Hill's outfit get the herd into the box canyon before the storm breaks? Looks like fate is again them, but we'll find out in the next episode. But in the meantime, boys and girls, why don't you sort of catch up with Grape Nuts Flakes? You know, it's the makers of this crunchy golden brown cereal that bring you buck in these programs. I'll stake my bottom dollar that you'll like Grape Nuts Flakes. Boys and girls, you're going to say that this is the best cereal you ever tasted. And it's good for you. That's why Buck Jones eats Grape Nuts Flakes and recommends them because they're wholesome and nourishing and help to build good, strong, healthy bodies. So why not ask Mother if you can go to the store for her yet today and get a package of Grape Nuts Flakes. And don't forget to save the tops from these boxes of Grape Nuts Flakes. They mean free prizes for you. And now here's Buck Jones again. Buck, you'd like to tell the boys and girls about your club, wouldn't you? That's right, old Wrangler. Well, partners, I'm mighty glad to have heard from so many of you after the last broadcast. It's sure heartwarming, too, to know that so many of you want to belong to my club. And how about the rest of you boys and girls? How would you like to be members of my club, too? There aren't any dues or membership bills or fancy fixings. Just tell them... Just tell me this. Are you interested in clean living, outdoor exercise, and seeing that the underdog gets a break? Well, if you are, then you belong to the Buck Jones Club, and here's all you have to do to join, too. Just send your name and address with one red top from a box of Grape Nuts Flakes to Buck Jones in care of the station you're listening to now. That's all there is to it. And as soon as I hear from you, I'll send you a good-looking gold and red membership badge with my picture on it. And the club manual, which tells you all about the prizes you can get. There are 41 dandy prizes, and it's plumb easy, too. So come on, partner, join up, won't you? Let's see how many members we can get before our next meeting. So then, I'll be looking out for you. And so Buck Jones rides away into the sunset. I know all you boys and girls are going to get right into that club of Buck Jones. And how about starting right now? Just send your name and address with one red top from a box of grape nut flakes to Buck Jones in care of this station. This offer is good in the United States only. How about having grape nut flakes for supper tonight or breakfast tomorrow? Till next time, so long from your friend the old Wrangler.